Okay, now, let's move on. As we shift now to the next lecture, talking about groups, there's a couple things that are worth mentioning, main, main lessons here to discuss. The first one is the need to belong. The need to belong is a term used based off the work of a very famous, famous, famous ecologist called Abraham Maslow. You may have heard about this guy. Abraham Maslow talked about the hierarchy of needs, the pyramid of needs, and how, according to the work of Maslow, all humans have a set of uh, similar uh, normal human needs that need to be accomplished starting from the bottom, physiological, uh, safety, love and belongingness, self-esteem or sense of accomplishment, and then self-actualization. But let's focus on the third one, which is love and belonging. So love and belonging led, ways, led social scientists to talk about the need to belong. The need to belong means, like the name implies, a need that we all have to feel like somebody cares for us, somebody uh, takes us in consideration that we're part of a group. It's a normal social need. To properly address the need to belong, there's a couple things that must be known first. There seems to be an agreement for the number of people that we need to feel that sense of belongingness. Social scientists agree there's about three to five close relationships to fulfill the need to belong. If you feel like you have those three to five close relationships in your life, you might believe that you're properly well uh, socially. You don't need dozens and dozens of people or hundreds or hundreds of people to feel like somebody cares for you. You actually need only people that you can count with the palm of your hand. Very often, the sense of belonging that very often is given to us through uh, romantic partners, family members, close friends, even a pet can give you that sense of belongingness. But that's not enough. Social scientists would agree that there's two main characteristics to achieve a sense of belongingness. The characteristics are that relationships must be positive. So it's not only to have a relationship, but actually have a good relationship or neutral. So either the relationships are good or at least they're not that bad. But a bad relationship is not really going to fulfill your need to belong. So that's one. The other one is that relationships need to be stable. So if you don't really feel like you can trust this person, this person is in and out in the relationship, sometimes you can come with this person, sometimes you can't, then it's not really fulfilling your need to belong. You might, need, you might, you mean, you might be better off uh, elsewhere with other people. The need to belong had this study but not only from the perspective of belongingness, but also about what happens when you don't get the sense of belongingness. So, ostracism, on the other hand, is a term to understand the social rejection. It's odd because as human beings, our ancestors had a better chance of survival if they belonged to a group. You're far more better to survive in a wild world when you have a group of people that are supporting you than when you're by yourself. So it is believed that it's ingrained in us because it's maximizing your chances of survival. Well, as I talk about that, feeling rejected is very, very painful. Even if it's people that, in a way, didn't really meant that much to you in the first place, perhaps. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, it did happen to me, it happens to me, it happened to me more than once. But recently, a group of friends uh, made a group of, made a group, a group of friends of mine, along with a couple spouses, made a group. Um, and my partner and myself were left out of that group even though we didn't feel that like we belonged that much in the group, the mere fact that, at least for me, I felt like all my friends were getting together without me was very painful. Very, very painful. And it's odd because when you speak to them, they don't see like it's such a big deal because they were like, well, you didn't feel that comfortable in the first place. But still, the fact that you may be getting rejected goes against our nature. 
So it's not usually a pleasant or a welcome sensation. You may have experienced this in your life before. If you haven't, then we'll realize that it can be somewhat painful. And uh, it's kind of odd because when it happens, it probably is the first time in my life that I at least have known this. But when it happens, my mind right away began to make comments like, in my mind, I began to think, think like, I began to think things like, well, I didn't like him anyways. I didn't feel that comfortable anyways. And they're kind of boring anyways. In my mind, if you notice this, I'm rationalizing this cognitive dissonance because trying to belong in that group goes against me not being as accepted by the group. So that conflicting attitude leads to a sense of discomfort, which leads to cognitive dissonance. Now, a couple quick things to wrap it up. Uh, I posted some images. There's a very famous uh, series of studies called the uh, Social Exclusion Cyberball Experiment, which have been replicated multiple times. But the thing that is so funny about that experiment is about kind of sort of like a video game where two computers, two computer characters are throwing themselves a ball and then they start to throw it at you through the monitor you're playing along with them. And at one point in the setup, they stop passing the ball to you. So they start to pass the ball out to each other, and you're left looking, not playing. And it's funny because participants get somewhat depressed, even though it's like a computer just playing with itself. The fact that they're ignoring you would make you as a participant feel somewhat uncomfortable and somewhat depressed about it. Those studies for me are very funny for what they reflect, but nonetheless it's part of what is social exclusion, so it can be very, very painful if while you believe you're trying to teach a lesson to someone or you're trying to deliver a message to someone, your route is by excluding someone socially, don't do that. It's one of the most painful things that we can experience as humans. Um, and in the sake of uh, social exclusion, um, you know, people may end up doing things that are not good for them. But that's the need to belong and it's our counterforce, which is uh, altruism.